Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Lewis Beck, and this is Upfront. The word reconciliation is something that's on the minds of many people, on the lips of many people. And there's a lot of work being done, both globally and locally. Here in Nanaimo, an important protocol has been signed by both the Nanaimo First Nation and the town of, Fort of uh, Nanaimo. And uh, tonight, we're going to find out exactly what it's all about. Tonight, I have with me Chief Michael Wise of Nanaimo First Nation and Mayor Leonard Krogh of the city of Nanaimo. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining me. So Chief Wise, could you uh, give me a thumbnail sketch of what brought Nanaimo First Nation and the city of Nanaimo to the table to develop this protocol? How did it all unfold? Yeah, sure. You know, <clears throat> over time, you know, our people have lived in this region of the island for many, many generations. And when our neighbors moved in, you know, we've had some rough times in the past, but looking into the future, we always come together as communities and looking how we can better benefit our people moving forward. So over time, we've uh, had a system that uh, has elected our government first, the Neymuch. And one of the first things that we put forward as a, as a council, a newly elected council, was to strategically, how can we move our community forward? And one of the first things that came forward is building a better relationship with our external partners, our external governments that we, we uh, connect with on a daily basis. So as time moved along, our council strategically put these things forward and with uh, Mayor and his new council coming in and being elected to their positions, uh, we, uh, we approached them. They approached us and we came together in a very respectful way and started these discussions, which took, how would I say, eight to nine months? Not quite that long. <laughs> It just seemed long. <laughs> yeah. So we, uh, we've been sitting down in a good way and uh, looking at uh, what has happened in the past and how we'd like to see the future move. So looking at our protocol agreement, uh, we said, well, let's, let's put this forward in front of us and see if we can see what's worked for us in the past and what's, uh, what hasn't worked and identified them in the agreements. and. Uh, we uh, sat down with a team. We had a team from our side and the city had a team from their side. And we uh, put some good things forward and <clears throat> came for went back and forth. And, um, and uh, last month we, uh, we signed a renewed uh, protocol agreement, which uh, is going to guide us, guide us into the future on how we do business together. So it's been a very um, good approach from Stenemo's perspective and the city have come to the table very respectfully. So we're very optimistic moving forward and uh, going down this path. So we're, we're very happy with that. That's really exciting, a whole new development. And it's, it's sort of an improved version. There wasn't one before and this is sort of the new version. Mm -hmm. So Mayor Crow, could you outline a little bit about what this new protocol amounts to? Uh, yes, uh, you know, firstly, the new protocol in its recitals recognizes that uh, since the first protocol agreement was signed or dated October 15, 2005, and, and a renewed uh, protocol agreement signed on April 30, 2009, uh, both Canada uh, and the government of British Columbia have recognized without qualification and endorsed uh, the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Um, the province is committed to draft principles that guide, as is set out in the recitals, the province of British Columbia's relationship with Indigenous persons. Uh, and where our relationship uh, is informed, as again recited, uh, by the final report of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and the calls to action. Uh, I think without question there uh, was a very real and sincere desire on the, on the part of Sinemuk uh, and the new council uh, to revise, recognize the changes and recommit to restart. There were some hiccups, no sense dwelling in the past, uh, unnecessarily tonight. Uh, there were some hiccups in the past and there was a strong mutual desire to move forward. Um, you know, to, I believe it to his Chief Wise's late mother who basically said uh, quite, 
quite candidly and openly, you know, neither of us are going anywhere. Mm -hmm. We're here. And, and, and she was a leader who committed to making it work. And I think we're, 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 we're governed and bound and, and we honor her memory by doing this work. She was well respected. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. No, she really was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so well, what are some of the key features of this, this new protocol, Marco? As I say, the, the recitals recognizing the changed circumstances, uh, but the guiding principles, I mean, obviously to, and I'm going to re do a little reading, act in an open, good faith, uh, transparent manner towards one another, um, renew our political relationship by reestablishing the protocol agreement working group. Uh, interestingly, uh, uh, the, the notice of the next meeting just arrived on our happy iPhones, welcome to the modern world, uh, before we started this, uh, this evening. Um, we are looking forward, I think, to, uh, as per the agreement, uh, open communication, respecting confidentiality, uh, con confidentiality and, and collaboration and dispute resolution where appropriate. Uh, but as Chief Wise and I have talked many times, there is an expectation uh, that Nanaimo is at a pretty important stage in its development. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of pressure around growth. Uh, the Sinaimic First Nation is confined to one of the tiniest reserves of any First Nation in the province of British Columbia. Uh, there are lots of things to be done. The waterfront development and, and what that looks like, respecting the historical village sites and sacred sites of the Sinaimic mm -hmm. First Nation. And what this agreement does is help set the framework for us to, to talk about those things and as the Chief has said, move forward. And that means creating opportunities for everybody in our community. Um, Chief Wise, could you, have there been specific projects that have been identified at this point? I know it's early days. Mm -hmm. Is there anything specific in terms of projects that will express the kind of thing that Mayor Krogh just uh, outlined uh, yeah, emerging just, as, at this point? You know, just going back to the key features and, you know, it's given the acknowledgement and recognition of the of Stenemok and the territory that we live in. Mm -hmm. So. Within that, you know, we've had some traditional village sites that were taken away from us, but over the years we've um, made our presence known on, on Newcastle Island where we've um, brought it back to life and uh, shared with the rest of the world and the city's walking with us and how that business is to move forward. So that's very, very bright spot there, you know, and uh, the waterfront, uh, um, that has been a long time coming to bring that waterfront and the downtown core back to life. How do we do that? Can we do it together? Can we walk together on what needs to be done there? And we're talking on that specific project as well. So there's a lot of good things that have uh, come out of our discussions in such a short amount of time. A lot of sort of possibilities and that have to be developed and, and take shape, I guess, through the consultation process. They'll identify the details and eventually make them happen. And, and, and the wonderful thing is, in, in addition to the, the partnership that's developing, and I'll call it a partnership, uh, is, is the participation of the, the Port of Nanaimo in all of this. Um, I'm not uh, going to uh, uh, prejudge anything that may or may not happen, but I think there is some hope that we will be able to talk about a, a tripartite agreement in due course. Certainly, Sinemic and the port are in, are in a respectful dialogue now, uh, and certainly is between the city and the port. Uh, and, and frankly, in the broader context of the community, the other elected body, which is the, the school district, the Board of Trust, Board of Education. Um, there is a, a lot of positive energy to use the modern lingo. Mm -hmm. I think in, in all of the major bodies in this community, whether it's the Chamber of Commerce as well, the university, uh, and, and we see it as an exciting time. Um, it's a time of reflection. It's a time of recognition of historical injustices uh, and education and an opportunity for education that, that probably, in fairness, wasn't on the agenda in the same way when the Product, first protocol agreement was signed and, the, and, and renewed again in 2009. That was a decade ago. Boy, I, I mean, I can look at my own hair and tell you the world's changed in, in a decade, but uh, <laughs> uh, certainly uh, lots has changed and this agreement helps us bring that together. So I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm 
the ultimate enthusiast right now. Oh yeah, there's a lot of good work that's being done. Uh, uh, President uh, uh, Nelson, Ralph Nelson of uh, Vancouver Island University, did some really groundbreaking work. You know, fostering good relations. I know with your people yes, there, uh, my chief Wise. Mm -hmm. uh, was uh, Ellen White, who was a resident elder there. Mm -hmm. I met some of the resident elders there, and uh, and there's a lot of positive efforts being made to to uh, um, come together mm -hmm. in in, uh, in terms of education. And you spoke about economics, economic projects that are, mm -hmm. that are mm -hmm. sort of on the horizon. Mm -hmm. uh, other things. Um, I heard uh, I heard it said that. Uh, that the relationship between native and non-native people is like a marriage, and uh, like uh, married people, and f people sometimes say we've got to stay together for the kids. <laughs> and they're the stakeholders that are mm -hmm. we're, we're working for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Um, and and look, I, it's something I think that needs mentioning again. Um, piece in the paper today: fifty percent of indigenous children in this country still live in poverty. Yeah. And I and I and I think it's important that. One of the things that we're conscious of is the economic side of this. Mm -hmm. um, that is, for me, and I think I can speak for the chief, I mean, one of the greatest blights that we as a community face because those numbers I don't think are much different in Nanaimo than they are nationally. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's about children. We're fathers, mm -hmm. grandfather. Um, we have something to work for. Yes, that's exactly right. The young people. Uh, uh, I'd like to ask about the youth, uh, Chief Wise. I know. Mm -hmm. uh, the youth, they must have something to say about this. They must have some mm -hmm. thoughts. What, what, what are you aware of in, in this line? Tell me. Well, it's, they're our future. If they're our future. They're so important to our people. And um, our old people always say, you know, we got we to gotta prepare the table for them. Mm -hmm. we got to make sure they're going to be looked after. But along the way, if they hit some bumps in the road we got to guide them so our our younger people are are so important to us and you know not only our people but all the young people that are living in the world today you know that have struggles we need to look after them because that's our future and we need to teach them right you know what's well setting a good example just the two of you mm -hmm. coming together working to overcome you know our prejudices our, our, our misunderstandings and then find a common ground mm -hmm. You know, for and, that reason. and part of that reconciliation process, I, I attended a session a few weeks ago sponsored through Fortis. They do it for their employees. They make it open to politicians and, and other community leaders. And, you know, there's a, a horrendous number of Indigenous children who have been apprehended uh, in our, in our uh, uh, system, uh, who have been taken from their, for their families. And that in and of itself reflects an attitude about it's the clash of cultures. Our view is, you know, we'll call it the dominant society expects parents to raise their children. If they're not doing a good job, the state takes them away. Um, the Aboriginal approach is a communal approach, I think it's fair to say. Mm -hmm. If someone's not doing their job in parenting, there's an aunt, there's an uncle, there's a cousin, there is a community. And, and the system that exists and has existed for a very long time has not been responsive to that. Mm -hmm. And that's just one aspect for me of reconciliation and, and seeing that changing attitude and governments need to catch up. Um, cultures raise their children differently. And um, by taking children away from their indigenous communities, uh, we have not made this province a better place or made their lives better. I think the question then becomes, how can we set the stage for this kind of cross-cultural fertilization where we can learn from each other? Mm -hmm. What will it take to, to make that happen? Mm -hmm. so. Well, maybe just stepping back again to what uh, Mayor has touched on in regards to our children and um, Child and Family Services. Our local agency is Kwamit Lalem Child and Family Services, mm -hmm. which represent nine nations within the Mid-Island region. And that's the approach we've taken. You know, if a family's having a tough time. We look at the cultural side of how can we help this young person. If there's an aunt, if there's an uncle that is willing to come forward and look after this person, mm -hmm. young person, then that's where we're going. And um, you know, with the hard work of the executive and the board and 
the administration of Kwame Lalem, you know, we've been able to move in that direction and take on that role for our kids. So, you know, making sure they're going down that right path. And uh, so they're going to be part of our society into the future. Yeah. Yeah, it's become plain to me that, like, the sort of thing you were talking about, like, us in the non native world could do well to incorporate that into our ways, too. And I suppose the kind of conversation we're having now can help that happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've speak, spoken to some of the people that, with your child development center, your child care center, mm -hmm. and uh, 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 Tammy Miles and uh, her daughter. We spoke here in this very studio about that very sort of thing. The, 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 the unique approach that, the, that you spoke of, uh, mm -hmm. Chief Wise, mm -hmm. is something uh, we could learn from, that's mm -hmm. what I think. And, and around children, I mean, I think the school board is very progressive on that locally, um, uh, and which, you know, we'll get on to the topic of what reconciliation looks like, but um, around encouraging education uh, of Indigenous history and Indigenous culture generally. Uh, you know, I say with some pride, I've got a daughter at BIU who's completing a degree in Indi Indigenous Studies. Now, I've got to tell you, 10 years ago, if you told me my daughter was going to go back to school to finish a degree in, in her mid-30s and said it was going to be in Indigenous Studies, I said to her, really? But we're 10 years down the road, and I'm quite thrilled and proud of her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it shows And she's helping away. educate the mm -hmm. whole family as she learns more and understands more. That's what reconciliation starts to look like after a while. It's I, about learning. And it's, from what I'm seeing, it's at multi-level. You know, it's at the government level, down, say, like this, the municipal, mm -hmm. and even at the grassroots level. There's a lot of individual people that are doing that too. There's, uh, you know, uh, individuals that are having conversations and, and uh, initiatives. Mm -hmm. There's a couple in Washington. They uh, they started their own uh, reconciliation initiative. Over, it took them five years to do it. Mm -hmm. But it was a very touching uh, story. It was a movie called Two Rivers. I saw it at the Global Film Festival years ago. I went and got my, my own copy of the film. Mm -hmm. And it's all about this individual couple. Just, but it was, they, they moved a whole community. Mm -hmm. They brought Native and non-Native people together for the reconciliation thing. Mm -hmm. and it was very, very touching. Mm -hmm. But we could also talk, too, that it's also happening globally. I know that in uh, other countries, Australia, they, uh, I just read online that the Australian, uh, West Australian police stations, they now fly the Aboriginal flag mm -hmm. outside the police stations. In, in Africa, they've got the, uh, the 2019 Desmond Tutu Reconciliation Fellowship. And I'll just quote here, the premier award in the world recognizing effective achievement in reconciliation. So it's, it's an expression to me is the, the expression of uh, that, that saying, think globally, but of course we're acting locally here, but it's, all, it's also happening globally. And then of course, across Canada, there's the, uh, the Truth and Sick Reconciliation Commission and then Reconciliation Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, could, can you talk a little bit about that? I think that's a na written by yeah. native oriented or driven. Yeah, I think, um, you know, when we speak on reconciliation, it's definitely, um, we're part of that message, that global message yeah. on the understanding of, uh, Indigenous peoples, the acknowledgement and the recognition of the culture that they, they carry and how does that culture walk with society and given that respect and recognition and the understanding, educating, over time we're going to be able to walk together. They're going to understand where we're coming from when we we uh, reference certain things that we have walked with all our existence as Aboriginal people. So I think key is the education part that uh, people come with an open mind and an open heart to understand who we are, who we are as a people. And we're no different than you or I, but we carry our culture, our ways that have been passed down to us over generations the understanding that we have this, you have that part of your life, and we can walk together. Well, there is a saying, which it took me a while to learn, but I think I'm saying it right, not so much swallowing. Not so much swallowing. Yeah, so yeah. One mind, one heart. One mind, one heart. You come in with an open mind and an open heart, and special things are going to happen. Yeah. 
I think that's kind of what's driving the work that you and, and Mayor Krog have mm -hmm. uh, started. Or, well, you, your, your people too, not just uh, yourselves, your, but our councils. Under your leadership, <laughs> shall we say? We, we have the honor and privilege of uh, having the title of being mayor in chief, but uh, we're also very conscious that we're one vote at our mm -hmm. tables, That's too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, can you share your feelings? How do you feel now about having come this far? What, what are your feelings about all this? Well, I, look, uh, <laughs> I, I think it's what we want, and generally speaking, um, we're like babies. When we get what we want, we're happy. <laughs> no, I, I, I look. I think, the, joking aside, there, there's a, a serious sense of satisfaction, uh, anticipation, and also a bit, a bit of nervousness, uh, because I, I think Chief Wise and I are both of a similar mind on this. Um, I won't say we're concrete people, but. <laughs> We want to see some things that are solid that we can go back to our respective communities and say, this is what we've been able to achieve. This is something tangible. It's, it's, the talk is important. The, the, the relationship is crucial to making, uh, to implementing the talk. But we want to see some projects, some employment, some benefits that we can say, look, as, as councils over this period of time, this is what's happened. I, 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 uh, I don't want to make it sound like we're a bunch of you know gung ho doers, but we like to see some things done, and I certainly that was the uh, always I think what uh, Chief Wise's mother thought, and I think that's what puts most people in the mayor's chair in any community. You want to see something happen. Mm -hmm. Definitely, you know, we want to see all our people benefit, and we want to see all our people with a better life, better way of life. And coming together, we're going to have that common ground moving forward. You know, I thank you for referencing my mother. You know, that was one of her statements that really stands strong is we're not going anywhere and you're not going anywhere. It's time for us to come together and figure this out. And, uh, you know, we, we're here today and very optimistic looking into the future, you know, the, the recognition the respect that we're going to carry on both sides moving forward and how we're going to do business is very key for us. And uh, so we're, we're very optimistic moving forward. Uh, Ellen White was a highly respected elder and she did a lot of groundbreaking work too. Very much. She, uh, she did a lot of work bringing people together. She was mm -hmm. a resident elder at VIU, I mm -hmm. understand. Yeah. And uh, she was responsible for a lot of progress mm -hmm. in, uh, in uh, on the reserve and also working with, you know, the, the two peoples and, and bringing them together. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of outstanding people. Very, very outstanding. You know, blaze, standing on their shoulders now. Bla blaze the trail for our people across this country. Yeah. Ellen White, you know, she was my grandfather's first cousin. So they're like brother and sister. So we, mm -hmm. you know, just um, hearing her life lessons growing up, you know, are there for life you and uh, a lot of people touched a lot of people so yeah. she's a um, very special person in our life so what are we seeing down the future what do you see down the road what 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 what, what do you see you know um hmm. what do you see um look i see a bigger community there is no question that this city and this region is going to grow dramatically whether people want it or not um, because of the climate, uh, because of the natural beauty, uh, because of its proximity to Vancouver and Victoria, uh, that's inevitable. Um, what does the future look like? I hope it looks like a community where people of all races, I don't want to sound too, you know, Pollyannish here, but people of all races, but particularly Indigenous people, um, move everywhere in our community with the same level of comfort that they move in their own homes. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, indigenous peoples on their land, their traditional territories, uh, for a long time, I think it's fair to say, have, have moved in the community in many occasions knowing that they were being looked down upon or disregarded or ignored, uh, as do immigrants from all around the world from time to time throughout this, this country's history. And for me, if the future looks like 
you're walking into a store and, and never expecting to be treated any differently than the customer before mm -hmm. you or the customer after you, mm -hmm. or, or treated any differently when you apply for a job because of your heritage, mm -hmm. that's, I'm, I'm, I'm very hopeful. Is it gonna happen in my lifetime or Chief Wise's lifetime? I don't know, but I, I think that the fact that we're here today talking about it and that there are so many people of goodwill in the community, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah I'm, I'm quite optimistic. I think that's what the future looks like. Mm -hmm. And, but, to come back to the practical, it's where we won't be talking about the statistics I mentioned earlier around poverty. Mm -hmm. A new society where the sort of stuff that happened in the past won't happen again, something like that. Yeah. You know, there, there has, I mean, let's, let's use some, some blunt language, if I may. There has been a stereotype promoted and, and referred to over time of, you know, the, the lazy Indian uh, who didn't want to work. And boy, we could unpack that one over days, literally. Mm -hmm. But uh, for me, an important part of that future is ensuring that employment opportunities are there for Indigenous peoples. And mm -hmm. that's what we're talking about now. We're not talking about the larger community. In terms of the Indigenous community, mm -hmm. the Sinemic, that the employment opportunities are there, that mm -hmm. there is the opportunity for meaningful work as should be the expectation of every Canadian. Oh my God. What do you think? What are you saying, Chief Wise? Yeah, you know, we're, we're optimistic, you know, and uh, sharing our story, getting the message out, educating the greater community, you know, we, that stigma that has uh, hampered our people for generations, you know, over time, you know, my grandfather was a, a longshoreman all his life, worked for a living. A lot of our people were working men, but there's this unfortunate stigma out there that they they weren't those people and we need to share our stories share our messages that our people are working people and they want to walk in society with everybody else equal mm -hmm. and you know we're very optimistic in our approach that we've taken with the city of Nanaimo we're looking to the future in a good way and uh, you know we're very I guess the word's been said a few times now, optimistic. That's yeah. great. I mean, yeah. the, part, part of reconciliation for me, and a, a really important part, is around the education, understanding the history. Like, my pin tonight is the best. Mm -hmm. All right, you can argue, and I love to wear it because I love to be provocative in some respects. It is the symbol of the community, kind of like Nanaimo Bar, the bathtub races. Mm -hmm. And you could also say on one level, it's the ultimate symbol of colonial oppression, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yeah, sure. Built by a, a corporate interest to protect against uh, Sinemic attacking it or anybody else. But also, amongst the three, three skilled people who worked on and built the bastion mm -hmm. were Iroquois. Wow. Yeah, wow, exactly. A little bit of history. I didn't know it until a few years ago. I didn't know it until now. But uh, I, I use it as an example. If anyone honestly thinks that this province was built by all the people who came here other than the First Nations, then they are in total, in total ignorance of mm -hmm. the real history. The fact is that these Iroquois came all across the country, I don't know how, to, to work on and build the bastion in conjunction with others. Um, do you think the, ca the fishing industry, the, all the canning, all of the many of the loggers, the fishers, all of those people didn't include Aboriginal mm -hmm. people. But some historically believe this all happened just, you know, because of the white folks, and that's not the way it was. I want to thank you, gentlemen, for this. I wish we could talk a lot more. There's so much to ground to cover here and so much to, to bring forward. Uh, I think we made a good start. Uh, I want to thank you both, Chief Wise, Mayor Krog. Many thanks for joining us here tonight on Upfront. And, uh, Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us too. I hope this was uh, instruction, instructive and illuminating. Mm -hmm. I'm Lewis Beck, and this has been Up Front.